let's move on from here. Let's talk about what I want to talk about, because it's my show, uh, and what you probably want to learn about, and that is how to use Stream Deck with Wirecast, the newer version. Uh, I don't know when when Telestream decided, hey, let's let's put let's work with Stream Deck and put on these buttons uh, options, but they're now on, and that is awesome here. And so what I do is I have my uh, MacBook set up, and I'm going to be uh, bringing in the Stream Deck configuration right there. As you can see, pretty blank right now. I do have Wirecast in here. It doesn't show up natively. So what you have to do is you have to go to More Actions and you have to install it from here. And as you can see, I have it installed and I don't want to uninstall it, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And then, of course, I have my PTZ camera set up. <clears throat> it's moved over a little bit. Apologies. There's my... So I've got the Stream Deck 15 on the, uh, on the MacBook Pro right now because this is what I use for the travel, the travel rig. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... to create a couple buttons and hopefully this will help on that so let's start by that doing that uh, and and I have my wirecast have yeah, quick setup it's just got basically my we'll do a one frame here I got the main uh, uh, logo I've got my little bug on this first master layer the second master layer I've got overlay uh, for lower third and then these are my shots when I just used some pictures there's me and California in, in uh, you know, one of the redwood trees. There's me uh, overlooking uh, Palo Alto, I believe that is. And then uh, one of the conferences that I do. So we'll just do that. These, this, and then of course an audio shot, uh, but <clears throat> probably won't use that, uh, keep that going. So there's two things that you can do with this. You can set, uh, you can configure your stream deck on Wirecast to use, where are we, there we are. To use a shot, a multi-shot, the go, auto live, stream, and record. So we'll start with these buttons. These are pretty straightforward. Record and stream. And of course you can change the, the buttons and everything like that. Auto live is the, uh, the ability to say, okay, I want it to just switch over. When I, when I choose a scene, switch it over or turn that off. So that's kind of nice. We have the go which is if you have auto live off, then we'll actually put this like this and we'll put this like this, we'll organize this. So auto live is on, auto live is off, auto live is on. As you can see with the, the little dots, in fact, I'll show you on the PTZ here. So auto live is on, the little red dot, we'll pr press a button, or a little, little red dot is gone and it's back. And the same thing on here, if I hit record, it'll be a green button and I stop it, it's not that. And then of course, the same thing with the stream. Uh, all right, so let's go back to here. Let's set up some shots. First of all, we have the regular shot button and then we have the multi-shot button. I love the multi-shot button. This is an amazing button. Let's move it over here. The best part about this button is the fact I can set one shot to do everything. And this, I usually call this my blank shot. So that's what I'm gonna say, blank shot so it's set up by index but you can set it up by name that's the name of each shot but I like index uh, then you set the master layer to clear layer actually in this one I do uh, I do the first frame and that's the first shot of the master layer which is this one right here the the geek is in shot so I have that set up and then the rest of them I have clear layer what that does is that sets me up and only have oh yeah I only have four layers going so I'll do four clears so what that'll do is that'll set up this this the it'll clear all these layers and then I'll put my geekazine bug on there so I'm gonna hit that button right now and for some reason it didn't totally work let's do that again Yeah, for some reason that didn't totally work. It works on the PC side, that's for sure. So, master layer one, shot one. Not sure why that didn't work. Oh, it's doing this one. Why is it doing that one instead of this one? Let's do that again. 
Yeah, it's doing the bug for some reason. I think I see a little bug. Not that little bug, but a different little bug. So if I go Master Layer 2, and I do this, now it does exactly what I want it to do. So it clears all the layers, and it brings it to this one. So I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure why that worked that way on the Mac. On the PC, it works, it works just fine. So let's go, let's do a multi-shot. And this one we're going to call Live Set. Uh, just basically the well, first one, so I think I just spelled that wrong. But anyway, we'll go by name this time. So as you can see, there we go. And we only have the 1080p and the bug for some reason. Oh, on the master layer one. Okay, so now I can go on to the what this one, which is my logo, and then I can go here. Okay. And then I can go the royal title, which is the lower third. And then here I can do uh, my first shot, which I believe is this one. And then, of course, the audio, which we won't do. We'll just say clear layer because I don't want any feedback to happen there. So now if I go over to here, let's, uh, let's do this. We'll go to shot two. We'll do this now. You can see it, although you can't totally see it. Let's zoom out a little bit. That's zooming in. Let's zoom out a little bit. That's still zooming in. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let me bring it up just a touch and zoom out a little bit more. This was set up. I don't know what's going on with it, why it didn't say set up. But anyway, so now if I go over here and I go blank, where, I'm, where everything's blanked out. And now if I hit live stream, everything just shows up. That's pretty cool, huh? I'll show it to you here. So now it's blank and now everything's showing up. So it's really awesome to have one button to say everything off, everything on. That is, that's, that's if for anything you use that, those are buttons you should use, so. All right, let's move on from there. Let's go back here. Now we're going to add in just the regular shots here. And this is perfect because then uh, you can actually have your uh, shots configured totally on, uh, <clears throat> on each scene. So if you do it like this, we'll just put a shot in. Uh, it says by grid position, so it'll figure layer one, index one. So if, th if I press this button right now, it would actually go to the uh, Geekazine. Well, in this case, the bug, because for some reason that bug is bugging the bug. So, in fact, we'll flip it just to see if that fixes the problem. And maybe I have to save things. But yeah, it's not working the way I want it to, but the bug is there. So let's bring that back. So you can do it that way. Technically, it should be doing layer one. Uh, well, in this case, it is. So if I move it over here, now, by grid position, it'll do layer one part two, which is that. So now it works perfect. <laughs> so we'll bring that back over here. So you can do it that way and have it automatically just set up the 15 buttons that way. Or you can do it by name or by index. So we'll do it by name. And then we'd get all the shot names. And we'll do the images. We'll do the first image. We'll go here. And we'll do the second image. And we'll go here. And as you noticed, uh, it, does the, it does the color coding on the layer. So you know that that's the third master layer because it's yellow. And of course, you can change the image if you want to. Uh, so this one we'll do by index just to throw everything off and we'll go index three. And this is shot layer two, which it set up just fine. So now if I go over here and go, whoops, let's, uh, let's do this first. So now if I go over here, it'll change the shot and I'll change the shot and I'll, and then of course, if I do the third one, and we'll go by index and we'll go three. 
That's perfect. So now, oops, I forgot to change the master layer. <laughs> Whoopsie. So now I change the master layer to three and three. Now it changes to yellow. Perfect. So now I hit that button. And, oh, that's interesting. I think I messed up. Okay. Because I don't know the uh, the pictures, picture number as well. So there we go. There's me in the tree. There's me in Palo Alto. And then, of course, me with the uh, in in the group area right there. So let's go back over to the PTZ so you can see it all in action. And we will just touch that up a little bit so you can see everything. There we go. Too much. I hate it when it does that. I hate it when it does that. Just up a little bit. Too much. <laughs> Sometimes the buttons are finicky. There we go. Okay, so now if I do all blank, I have my scene. If I want to start from base one, boom, everything's from base one. And then of course I can switch between my three and you know, my three images right there. I can uh, I can do auto live. Let's turn off auto live. So now when I switch it over, and as you can see, there's little light buttons. Uh, well, you can't see it because it's kind of flushed out. But there's uh, there's actually green and red buttons on the uh, on the stream deck to tell you which one's active, and which one's not. So especially when you're not auto live. So now I'm going to hit the go button, and there I can do the uh, go from there. Or if I just want to go auto live, boom. And then these buttons are red. Let's see if I can show you that really quick. We'll go back down here and bring this back in. And there it is in focus. As you can see, the red button right there, red, red. And then if I turn off auto live, now it's green. So that's preview and then go. So pretty straightforward. So um, I think it was four I did this. Let's, yep, there it is. This is my stream deck right now. Let's, uh, let's zoom it out just a touch. There we go. So uh, as you can see, these buttons are all configured to companion. So I can bring in my lower thirds from another computer. I have my processor telling me how much uh, process I'm using. So a couple time zones, the stream, as you can see, the stream is on, the record is off, all on or all off. I love that. I love that. I love that. And then of course, my main shots, my main with the zoom, screen, screen split, PTZ, the, the, this PTZ optics right here, with the split, and then the second PTZ down here, and then an extra. So this will change. Right now, it's set up to my MacBook Pro, the, the screen on there. But as you can see, it's got everything that you need for Stream Deck to work. And the best part is it's not hotkeys. And the one problem I had with hotkeys is sometimes hotkeys would mess up other programs. Like for instance, if I was on my, uh, let's say I was on split screen and I came over here and I started working on, you know, br bringing up a website or something like that. And I clicked on there and I started typing on here and then I hit back on one of the other buttons. It would actually do the hotkey in the address bar. So, then my address bar would be uh, would be filled with Alt F, Alt three, you know, Shift two, you know, stuff like that, um, and then that would mess up. Or uh, one of the comments would start going that, and if you hit Enter, and all of a sudden, you know, your comments say, "What? I don't get it. What?" <laughs> you get the idea. So the the bottom line is that this is all set up now, so you can do a stream. You don't have to worry about the hotkeys. You can save the hotkeys for other things. So if you have another program that needs uh, shift one, shift seven, whatever, then you can do that and then keep and then just use the stream deck for, for that. I haven't tried it with both stream decks attached to my computer, one computer, but I know some people that do that. They also run that program. It's called Companion which is a program that sets more hotkey options. And like I said, with the, uh, let's go back here. This is really cool because I can do 99 pages of 
all these buttons. So right now, these are all the buttons that have like the graphic like this come on play. And then I can go here. These are all my PTZ optic positions. If I need to do some small adjustments, I can. And then of course, I don't have any other pages set up for this, but I can set it up for other things like Photoshop, uh, Premiere, uh, web pages or, or anything like that and I can have just everything go through there. It's just it's amazing. It's an amazing little program. And I'm excited about it because it's it's a great program. It's a great program to have and uh and use in there and it's gotten and Stream Deck has gotten so much better now with Wirecast. Uh, Stream Deck also works with OBS. There are some OBS buttons. Uh VMix buttons, I don't know. VMix what are you guys doing with Stream Deck? I know you work with X-Keys. And, and, of course, Wirecast works with X-Keys as well. It's also a great little device. Uh, it makes Stream Deck more customizable and awesome to use. And that's the cool thing about this. So that is the Stream Deck. That's, that's everything there that to uh, connect up and use on your Wirecast to make your Wirecast productions better. And the best part is, and like I said, other programs, like for instance, uh, I have my titles on another computer. So when I bring in my lower thirds and stuff like that, it comes in via NDI. I can hook up my Stream Deck to do it from there. Like I said, the companion software also does that with the uh, listener uh, software from uh, Visceral. And uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. So that is the Stream Deck part of things. Hopefully that'll help you understand how Stream Deck works, how you can configure Stream Deck to do a lot more than just a couple of button presses. But if that's all you need it for is button presses, boom, use it. Abuse it. Rock it. Roll it. Make cool videos. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. So, all right. That does it for this episode of Wirecast. Pros, what do you guys think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know. Uh, you can do that by... Okay, there we go. <laughs> it was a little delayed. You can do that by tweeting me over at Geekazine. Geekazine at gmail.com. Think Magazine. Put in a geek. You got me. And uh, we're rocking and rolling and uh, dancing like little Ewoks. So, Anyway, uh, this, is, uh, this is a program called uh, Davoom. And you can actually make images. So if you've got an image on Davoom, you want me to show it up here? Hey, let me know. And uh, I'll, I'll Davoom it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, like I said, we won't be back next week because that's CES 2020. Two weeks from now, we should be back as long as everything is okay. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see you then. So till then, you guys geek out and take care. <laughs>